Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Lepakshi Kurana. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you. Flags at half mast as India's Gujarat mourns deadly bridge collapse. China to help Pakistan stabilize its financial situation, says President Xi Jinping. And former Sri Lankan Minister Rishad Batyuddin acquitted in case filed over Easter attacks. And now for all the details. India's Gujarat state on Wednesday mourned the death of at least 135 people in a bridge collapse tragedy on Sunday with the national flag at half-mast on government buildings while public functions, receptions and entertainment programs were cancelled. Meanwhile, rescue workers continued their search at the site for any unaccounted persons for a fourth day. India's Gujarat state on Wednesday mourned the death of at least 135 people from a bridge collapse on the weekend, with the national flag at half-mast on government buildings and public functions, receptions and entertainment programs cancelled. Gujarat Chief Minister Bhupendra Patel has appealed to people in his state to pray for the departed souls and their families. The colonial-era suspension footbridge in Morbi town over the Machu River was packed with sightseers when it gave way on Sunday evening, sending people plunging about 10 meters into the water. Rescue workers continued their search for any unaccounted persons for a fourth day. Our boat is now here, six working here, four are in reserve, and the rest of our boats are in reserve. Sir, as you said, you are saying that there are two or two bodies that are in the water, so this is missing? Yes, this is missing, this is missing. A senior police official said this week that about 200 people were on the bridge when it collapsed. Local municipality officials said tickets for about 400 people had been sold, although not necessarily to be on the bridge at the same time. Police have arrested nine people for the disaster. In a bid to tackle air pollution in India's national capital, New Delhi, the government said that they will pay construction laborers nearly $60 in one-time compensation after the government suspended most construction and demolition work. The government has also appealed to Delhi's 20 million people to reduce the use of coal or firewood at home. In a bid to tackle the air pollution in India's capital, Delhi Chief Minister Arvind Kejriwal said on Wednesday that they will pay construction laborers 5,000 rupees, nearly 60 US dollars, in one-time compensation after the government suspended most construction and demolition work. The city government also appealed to Delhi's 20 million people to share car journeys, work from home when possible, and reduce the use of coal or firewood at home. The world's most polluted capital is blanketed in smog every winter as cold, heavy air traps, construction dust, vehicle emissions and smoke from the burning of crop residues in the neighbouring states of Haryana and Punjab ahead of the new crop season. Parali ki samasya ka samadhan kisano ko sayog dene se hoga, kisano ko gali dene se nahi hoga. Isle kisano ko gali dena band kiya jaye aur jo galti kiya hai bhajpa ne, bhajpa ki kendra sarkar ne, उसके लिए उसे माफी मांगना चाहिए किसानों के साथ, दिल्ली वालों के साथ माफी मांगना चाहिए। आपकी वजह से आज पराली पंजाब के अंदर जल रही है। अगर सब मिल करके जब किसान तैयार थे, पंजाब सरकार तैयार थी, दिल्ली सरकार तैयार थी, अगर आपने सहयोग किया होता, तो आज पंजाब में जो पराली की घटनाएं आधी हो चुकी होती Delhi's pollution was in the very poor category early on Wednesday, better than Tuesday's severe reading, according to data from the Federal Ministry of Earth Science. Very poor air can lead to respiratory illnesses on prolonged exposure, while severe air affects healthy people and seriously impacts those with other diseases. 
And in news from Pakistan, Pakistan's ruling coalition, PDM President Maulana Fazlur Rahman, has claimed opposition leader Imran Khan wants martial law to be imposed in the country if the government did not appoint the next army chief of his choice. Rahman said the government won't make any compromise on the supremacy of the constitution and the law. Ruling coalition PDM Pakistan Democratic Movement President Maulana Fazlur Rahman on Tuesday claimed that opposition PTI chief Imran Khan wants martial law to be imposed in the country if the incumbent government did not appoint the next army chief of his choice. JUIF party chief Rahman told reporters that the government won't make any compromise on the supremacy of the constitution and the law. He said the national institutions, be it the army, judiciary or the election commission, should be apolitical. His remarks came after Khan in an interview said that if the government wants to impose martial law, they can do so and he isn't scared of that. He stressed whatever is happening nowadays is worse compared to what happened during ex-president Parvez Musharraf's tenure. Information Minister Maria Aurangzeb said that Khan has accepted that he wants to revolutionize the country through bloodshed. She blamed Khan is inviting the army to interfere in the political activities of the country to remove the coalition government from power. Imran Khan's long march rally to call for early elections is expected to reach Islamabad by November 11. Since being removed from office in April, he has demanded snap polls, but the government has said they will be held as scheduled later next year. And Chinese President Xi Jinping said that China will continue to support Pakistan as it tries to stabilize its financial situation during a visit by Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif to Beijing on Wednesday. Both the leaders discussed mutual cooperation, especially in the controversial China-Pakistan Economic Corridor projects. China will continue to support Pakistan as it tries to stabilize its financial situation, President Xi Jinping said on Wednesday during a visit by Pakistan's Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif to Beijing. Both leaders discussed mutual cooperation in all areas of bilateral relations, especially the China-Pakistan Economic Corridor, CPEC projects, and agreed to further strengthen strategic partnership, the Pakistan's PM office said. Pakistan had indicated previously that it will seek bilateral debt relief to lessen its balance of payment problems, but it hasn't made any official announcement on whether it will formally ask Beijing for such help. Pakistan's central bank reserves have fallen to as low as 7.4 billion US dollars, barely enough for one and a half months of imports. Pakistan had been struggling with a balance of payments crisis even before devastating floods hit the country this summer causing it an estimated 30 billion US dollars or more in losses. The CPEC has been opposed by neighboring India as it passes through parts of its Jammu and Kashmir and Ladakh, which are under illegal and forcible occupation of Pakistan. Activists in the region also blame both Pakistan and China have been plundering natural resources in the name of development as part of CPEC, which has only brought death and destruction for the indigenous people. The United States has said that after the Taliban takeover, terrorist groups have been reactivated in Afghanistan and Washington will continue to act unilaterally to address emerging terror threats from the country. U.S. State Department spokesperson Ned Price said Washington and its partners around the world won't allow Afghanistan to become a safe haven for international terrorists. U.S. State Department spokesperson Ned Price on Tuesday warned that terrorist groups have been reactivated in Afghanistan after the Taliban takeover and Washington will continue to act unilaterally to address emergent terrorist threats from the war-torn country. Ned Price noted that the presence of Al-Qaeda leader Ayman al-Zawahiri in Kabul flies in the face of Taliban's repeated assurances not to allow Afghan territory to become safe havens for terrorists. The Taliban has denied that Zawahiri, a co-accused in the 9-11 attacks, was present in Kabul and killed in a U.S. airstrike in July. Uh, we've been very clear that the United States and uh, our partners uh, around the world won't allow mm -hmm. Afghanistan to become a safe haven for international terrorists who uh, pose a threat to the United States, to our partners around the world. 
the Taliban's actions in uh, sheltering the leader of Al Qaeda in Kabul, they fly in the face uh, of the Doha agreement and their repeated assurances uh, to the world that they would not allow Afghan territory to be used by terrorists to threaten the security of other countries. Since taking over Afghanistan in August 2021, the Taliban has emphasized that it has improved security. But in recent months, there has been a series of blasts at mosques and civilian areas. In the latest on Wednesday, a blast hit a bus carrying Taliban administration employees in Kabul, injuring seven people. However, there was no immediate claim for the attack. Well, in news from Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan court on Wednesday acquitted former minister Rishid Bathiuddin, who was named a suspect in a case filed over 2019 Easter Sunday terror attacks. The parliamentarian was detained for over seven months under an anti-terrorism law. Sri Lanka's Colombo Fort Magistrate Court has ordered the acquittal of parliamentarian Rishad Bathiuddin, who was named a suspect in a case filed over Easter Sunday terror attacks. Batiuddin on Twitter said the government of former President Gotabaya Rajapaksa came to power accusing him and the entire Muslim community for the Easter attacks. He said he was remanded for seven months unjustly under the Prevention of Terrorism Act. Nine suicide bombers belonging to local Islamist extremist group National Tohi Jamaat linked to militant group Islamic State carried out the series of blasts that tore through three churches and three luxury hotels in Sri Lanka in April 2019. The former minister was arrested in April last year and remanded under the PTA until he was granted bail on 14th October 2021. Last November, a Sri Lankan court began the first of three trials connected to the 2019 bombings. The series of devastating bombings also injured about 500 people, mostly belonging to the island nation's minority Christian community. And Mudhira in Gujarat state has become India's first village to run entirely on solar energy all the time. The solar project financed by the government has not only helped with the villagers' bills, it has also become a source of income as any surplus power they have can be sold back to the electric grid. Residents of India's first solar-powered village, Mudhira in Gujarat state, have said the rooftop solar panels on their homes have lit up their lives as they now have more than enough renewable energy and they can also sell the surplus power to the electric grid. 68-year-old Potter Kesabhai Prajapati says he has now doubled the amount of earthenware he makes compared to a few months ago since he no longer has to turn the wheel manually as he could not then afford high electricity bill that was up to 1500 rupees a month. The affordable solar power has helped the village of around 6,500 residents, consisting mainly of potters, tailors, farmers and shoemakers, to save time and produce more products. The project in Modhira has been financed by the federal and provincial government at nearly $10 million. The government buys excess energy from the residents. With this money, 43-year-old Praveen Bhai, a tailor, plans to buy a gas connection and stove. Since many houses in the village cook food in wood-fired stoves that leave a smoky haze. India, the world's third largest carbon dioxide emitter, aims to meet half of its energy demands from renewable sources such as solar and wind by 2030. A boost over its previous target of 40%, the government said it achieved in December 2021. For a self-reliant India of the 21st century, we have to increase such efforts related to our energy needs, PM Modi said earlier this month. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now our viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com. You can also visit us on Facebook.com slash and follow us on Twitter at SAsianewsline. 
That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India.